is willing to win, you know. Um, he doesn't like to lose at all. That's something that, I, that we share. Jaquan Lyle, born February 24th, 1996. Today's feature is a guy who you may remember was supposed to step right in for Ohio State at point guard after D'Angelo Russell declared for the NBA draft in 2015 and run the show for the next however long they could keep the former five-star recruit. At 6'5", Lyle is one of those players you'd say just has game. A true hooper that gets it done on the floor in many different ways and while his numbers don't suggest he was an on-the-radar NBA prospect looking back at them, if you followed his story or seen him play, you knew he had high-level pro written all over him. He had size, slightly above average athleticism, could shoot it from deep, not the fastest but could find his way into the paint at will using his deceptive ball handling skills that reminds me of an East Coast guard like Dion Waiters. And best of all, his court vision and creativity passing the ball was probably his best features. Describing this player to me would easily pique my interest, then hearing the high major college offers he had after just his freshman year in high school lets you know he was the real deal. But by the time he left high school, he had decommitted from at least two schools, had dropped from five to four stars, and wouldn't play for a full year after his 2014 high school class had moved on. From there, Lyle ran into just about everything possible that could stop him from capitalizing on his talent, from NCAA investigation into a scandal involving the University of Louisville, who supposedly on four different occasions sent escorts to pleasure Lyle and entice him to commit to their program, to untimely injuries, being arrested, Project X style house parties, transferring to a different school, sitting out, eligibility questions that force change of scenery, you name it and Jaquan Lau probably has an interesting story to tell you all about how it went down. Only the story is more sad than anything to see so much talent not be able to compete on the biggest stage, that being the NBA. It's a story that makes clear that talent isn't everything. As a prospect, you must believe that exact statement as it'll give you the chip on your shoulder and sense of urgency you need to understand there's no time to sit back and relax even when you're considered one of the best of your peers. Even when the keys to a program that just sent a guy at your position to the NBA as the second overall pick by a franchise like the Lakers are placed in your hands months later. So much goes into that specific journey to a destination millions try their hand at and no matter how good you are, after the things that happened to Jaquan Lau happened to you, it can create an uphill battle or cause you to miss out on your NBA opportunity altogether. Talent, again, isn't everything. For these reasons, Jaquan Lau unfortunately found that out. What happened? Let's talk about it. Salute to It's B. White on IG for this request. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Jaquan Lau is a point guard shooting guard from Evansville, Indiana that first hit the radar as a freshman in high school, where he received major interest being a big guard that already had elite passing IQ and understood how to lead varsity age players. By the end of his sophomore year, he had offers from Louisville, Indiana, Oregon, and other top schools before he had his breakout junior year that really placed him on the map as one of the best in the country. He averaged 27 points, 13 rebounds, and almost 7 assists per game that season before transferring to Huntington Prep in West Virginia for better competition and a chance to pick up a few more big-name schools for his senior year. He transferred to IMG for a post-grad year and right before his senior year had made statements confirming Louisville sent him escorts on four different occasions which caused an investigation into Rick Pitino and the school. He decommits soon after and commit to Oregon but problems with his high school credits prevented him from enrolling at the school so he landed at Ohio State in 2015. Stunt number one, injuries out the gate. As mentioned, Lau was a five-star recruit for most of his high school career but left school a four-star and much of it was because of a torn meniscus he suffered during his senior year at IMG. 
The injury occurred February 2015, keeping him out for six months. In that time, he became a question mark for scouts who figured he'd be much less explosive and much less aggressive entering college. Lyle made clear the injury didn't slow him down, it actually made him much faster, he says, more explosive and helped him lose 20 pounds, but seeing him play from high school to when he finally got to play for the Buckeyes, it was obvious he was a different player for better or for worse. Better because it made Lau much more smarter as a decision maker, it helped his pace to the game and like he said, improved his footwork as it should, having the time to figure how to balance himself so he isn't injured again. For worse though, because damaged goods, no matter how you repackage it, is still damaged goods in the eyes of specifically scouts who then held him as an afterthought. It would take a stellar college showing to change that and when he finally got on the floor for the 2015-16 season, it was easy to see his potential and games like at Indiana where he had 29 or 27 versus Wisconsin further showed his talent. He finished averaging 11 points, 4 assists and nearly 5 rebounds but shot just 25% from 3 and his team missed a tournament. Injury would plague him again during his time in college that really solidified he's talented but damaged after he transferred to New Mexico and tore his Achilles tendon his redshirt junior year during the team's second practice. He had already sat out a year due to transfer rules after leaving Ohio State. Now this would make two years he sat out and the second major injury to his body before even being ready to enter the draft. Stunt number two, immaturity issues. Taken into consideration just as much as your talent is the level of maturity you've developed up to that point that paints a picture for whoever's evaluating that this prospect has at a certain level the capacity to understand all that's invested in him joining a league like the NBA that generates billions of dollars, invests millions into its players, and presents you as a role model for the fans and representation of the franchise wherever you go, whether you like it or not. The last thing a prospect on the edge of consideration wants to do is give reasons to point to why you don't measure up as a mature young man ready to compete and be teammates with grown men that have their own families most times and are playing to keep a job and extend their playing days. Representation being the most important of all mentioned. How you look in public can destroy a franchise's brand, especially in the era of instant news cycles. April 11th, 2017, Jaquan Lau had left the Ohio State team for unknown reasons following a sophomore season many believe he underperformed and then the next month he was arrested after leaving a bar and grill then punching a door on his way out because he was told he wasn't allowed back in. As police watched, he allegedly stumbled through crowds, bumping into people before approaching a police car and punching that too. He was taken to jail, processed and fined for his conduct during the early morning hours. He transferred to New Mexico to finish out his eligibility and while there he was suspended by the team his final year for throwing a house party in an Airbnb where multiple people were shot and resulted in over $10,000 in damages to the property. The senior guard who had been past his senior year in high school for six years now still struggled with issues of understanding what was at stake and failing to show, especially as a point guard, that his actions weren't seen as the leadership needed to make it on the next level. It stained his reputation. In a time after injuries and five years in college, he had no room to show immaturity issues as well. Stunt number three, going undrafted. Leaving New Mexico, Jaquan Lau was 24 years old already, had torn his meniscus in his knee, dealt with a college scandal involving a major D1 school and coach, had been arrested, suspended by his own team, all while not showing much improvement in the right areas in the three seasons he did officially play college basketball, averaging the same assists, rebounds and slightly more points per game as his freshman year. With all the baggage, he went undrafted in the 2020 NBA draft and for the most part wasn't considered a serious prospect. This was a guy borderline McDonald's All-American in high school, college star and NBA prospect should everything go as planned, but as you see, they didn't and left a talented point guard, now 28, far past his window of opportunity. 
He was signed in Greece, but that lasted just two games before he and the team parted ways. He was drafted in the second round of the G League draft in 2021, though it's not clear he ever played a game in that league, and soon after just faded away from basketball altogether as far as being a player. He now looks to be focused on player development and training. All in all, Jaquan's story can also show that it's not over after basketball doesn't work out. He's a personable guy with a lot of knowledge and experience playing at a high level as an amateur, things he can share with younger hoopers while staying around the game and supporting himself. Talented player, had so much game, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out.